Hello, everybody. Welcome to Enlightened Up. Our guest is hearing that title probably for the first time. He had no idea what he was getting into. He just thought he was doing Craig Shoemaker's <laughs> podcast. He had no idea that this is really about offering light and levity to the world, trying to shift the consciousness, mindfulness, presence. Let's get to a better spot. Let's be better human beings. So let's uh, offer something different than what's out there, and that's what this show is. Obviously, it's going to be a lot about comedy because I happen to be a comedian, Craig Shoemaker, for a long time. And we have a lot of comic guests. Um, so by, make sure, let me get them all this stuff out of the way. You pass the word and whatever you do, put a sign on a, they even have telephone poles anymore. That's how I started with stapling things on telephone poles. I think they still do. Yeah. I don't think they do. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> we, I, we had telephone poles filled with staples from oh, all yeah. the shows that would come by. That's how we did it back then. But that's not how it's done now. Give us a like. Review us. Pass the word around. Tell six people like you're in Amway. Whatever it is, pass the word. Grassroots. We want to help the world. We need this right now. Now, our guest today is someone I ran into at Supernova. It's a show with a lot of stars do this show. Yeah, it's a big show. It's pretty amazing who they have. Like, uh... They, by the way, when I show up, they call me OG. I'm like an OG guy. <laughs> they say, hey, man, you're OG. I go, really? And that means, it doesn't mean old guy, as someone said. It means original gangster. Yeah, you're like the Snoop Dogg of comics, in it's a way. A, wow, I'll, ta know, I'll take that, because he still has a career. I don't. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Bill Dawes is our guest. Uh, as, as they say in Philadelphia, Bill Dawes. Bill Dawes is our guest here, and he comes from Virginia. Virginia. Right? Yeah. yeah, so you know about Philadelphia and Baltimore with the accent, right? Oh, yeah, you, yeah. Right? yeah. Horrible accent. The worst. Baltimore is the worst. It's worse than Boston, yeah. Yeah, and Philadelphia is very similar to Baltimore. Yeah. Just a really, really nasally, just uh, just an accent that's just so repulsive that yeah. I couldn't wait to stop the doing it, but I still end up doing it. Is there a Virginia accent, Bill? You know, it's funny. I don't know. I, I always talk about my accent and say, like, I'm, I'm half white, half trash. Like, my mom is from Appalachia. <gasps> And wow. uh, and my dad's from California, but they moved to Virginia, so I grew up in Virginia. And I was the only one of my three brothers in recordings that sounded like a total hick. I was like, I've been playing soccer for about four years now, and uh, <laughs> I'm playing, playing for another, you know, and my other brothers didn't for some reason. I'm just, like, mildly retarded or something. I'm <laughs> You know, I do voices, uh, a lot of voices. That's why I started as an impressionist, and I can hear things. You've probably been told this before. You sound like a celebrity. Your natural cadence, your natural. I mean, if I go into it, I can kind of hit it like a Matthew McConaughey. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's like it's it. You could do. You could literally loop him. I I've and, been asked by his people there before. You go. They say, I, would you be interested in doing ADR? It never happened. Is there a I career for me having an ear for this? <laughs> Probably, yeah. I, I, I should be an agent for voiceovers. Yeah. I heard that. I'm going. Wow. It's so you really have it's from the same place in the throat. You could do a Matthew McConaughey impression easily. Yeah. It kind of it kind of definitely comes natural to me. For some reason, I have like a, a Texas accent. Although I'm from Virginia, I have no idea why that works. <laughs> Where that happened from. Now, I've had, you know, big stars on our show, and I've had, you know, I've met practically everyone except Bruce Springsteen, the only person I still haven't Whoa. met. That's I've met, you know, lots of people. I don't think in that seat or any of the seats I've done, I've never I've ever been this jealous of anyone. Why? Well, <laughs> he's he, well, he you're, just, you're you should, misinformed you about should, something. You here. should have seen the take on him. Like, <laughs> what did you just say? I don't think I've ever been so jealous. Let's just start. Let's start from the top down, okay? We've hey. we got the full head of hair. Oh, the, yeah. the, you can actually make it fly any way you want. Okay, let's just start with that, and we'll go down. Okay. Well, okay. I've been I've been fighting hair loss for 15 years, like the Taliban in the trenches of <laughs> Afghanistan, for real. Like it's been a project. You know what I mean? So this is like modern science and medicine working. And it's probably affected my boner and my prostate. Who knows? Oh, but I've do been, you do Propecia? Propecia, Rogaine, yeah. Wow. I've been doing it all. Yeah. Have you really? And has it worked? I mean, I've kept my hair. It's got me jealous, so it must have been done okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You know, it'd there be was nice a, to have a frothy head of hair. But. There, was a, I was, there was a comedian. Remember Richard Jenny? Yeah. One of the greatest comedians. Yeah. And we started together, and he oh, was wow. obsessed with his hair. I got a knock on my hotel room one day. He goes, shoo, let me see your drain. <laughs> he wanted to see how much was in my drain. How much you dr lost in the shower? Huh? How much you lost in the shower? Yes. He wanted to see, because I told him my hair was, you know, coming out a little bit. This is back in the 80s. And he went, shoo, let me see your drain. <laughs> so he goes in and he expects, because I, he's a, you got nothing on me. You know, like it was a contest. But so let's just start. All right, forget the hair now that I heard it's 
been enhanced by Propecia <laughs> and Rogaine, which I will not do because I have to have boners. Yeah, boners are good. I was a little worried for a little while that I was losing it because my wife cut me off with sex. I was a little concerned, but she finally gave me some yesterday. Oh, nice. Yes, it was amazing. How long? What was the hiatus I'm, between oh, them? Long. Okay. Really long. Okay. She, she uh, uh, hormones, uh, you know, women with hormones yeah. and menopause. Menopause, yeah. Which basically means put men on pause. Yes. I, I think that's where it came from. Yeah. Because I got put on pause and I was not happy. But then I actually wondered if it was going to work when, and it did. I was nice. very happy. It's not about me, about me being jealous <laughs> of you. Let's start with, uh, so you're Princeton, a Princeton guy. Yeah. That's kind of like near Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. So I, we know the Princeton people and we present every one of them. <laughs> of course, okay. so do I. <laughs> so you do too. Yeah, you, I didn't fit in there. You didn't? No, I grew up poor. You know, I grew right. my, my high school was a very poor. Like I say, my high school was 70% uh, black and 30% terrified. And I'm not quite, I'm not <laughs> conflating poor with minorities. I'm just saying it was like a rough school. Yeah. So um, when I got to Princeton, I was literally called a wigger. They literally called me and I'd never heard that term before. Right. You know, this is in the. That's combining whatever. white with the yeah. N word. Yes. So, um, and I wore like hip hop clothes, and f- I didn't have you fat wore laces, hip- but I was I was a professional break dancer. Yeah, from Virginia, <laughs> yeah. white man, and pretty white by the way. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You got the alabaster's my master. You got that going <laughs> on, man. Yeah, not a lot of pigment going on in my no, blood. Right exactly. Now. And so, and how does one who is that Caucasian? Become a break dancer. Well, just my school was just very diverse, and that was oh, what was cool. You got know? it. The cool black kids had the, the dance crews, and so me and my motley crew of, like, Asian, white, black friends got together. We you were the misfits. I love that the white guys the Yeah, misfits. yeah, 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 yeah. But we, we had a little bit of diversity, and then we'd go to Chuck E. Cheese and have competitions <laughs> and put cardboards out in the street with a box, the whole thing. Um, yeah. Chuck E. Cheese is having break dance. Chuck E. Cheese, the teen night. That was the hot spot yeah. in Virginia. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, did Chuck E. make an appearance? That oh, thing God. was the most, that thing Disturbing is. Disturbing as it's, uh, it, Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it, 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 it's, yeah. It, there's, I don't even know, like you're at the corporate meeting. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're looking at the designs because they had to come up with a number. This is a multi million dollar company. Yeah. And they're going, and presenting our choice, yeah. This rat that is not even like a clean rat. He looks like he was a, a <laughs> like a hobo rat. Yeah, whatever it is, it's not a good look. And yeah. that's what they decided on. Yeah, with big black dilated pupils. <laughs> yeah, it's no good. We got a meth rat. <laughs> to top it all off. <laughs> so I'm going to go over my list of jealousies. Okay, I'm a little de- je- jealous of the break dancing because I love dancing, but I'm not that good of a dancer. So you became also a dancer, like a real dancer. Yeah. Right? Like step, kickball, change, step, brush up, step, yeah, step. Yeah, yeah. I studied ballroom. I was a go-go dancer in New York when I was in, gr- when grad school. I was a go-go, go-go dancer. Go-go dancer. In college, I was a go-go dancer for like five, six years. Yeah. And this includes women putting tips in your whatever the whatever you're wearing I never really that, it wasn't it wasn't like magic mike it wasn't like that <laughs> level it'd I be great know, Matthew McConaughey again. But it was go. mostly like you know jeans no shirt lightly oiled baseball <laughs> cap <laughs> lost Dance. my jealousy on that one <laughs> yeah nobody <laughs> and i'd always say like and sometimes you do gay night i quit cuz one one night at, at webster hall in new york they made me wear a diaper and I was dancing on a box in my diaper with a big pin. It's an old folks' home? <laughs> what was this? It was Listen, some we need theme. you to blend in here. This is what they wear. And I looked over, and there was a little person. I won't say the M word. A little right. person in yeah. a diaper. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing wearing a diaper dancing next to a, uh, whatever. Now, I do, the jealousy part is also the diversity of a guy that's, Wearing a diaper and some other things, and he's oiling his body, and he's doing these different types of dances, which makes me a little envious because I love dancing, but I don't have the skills that you have. But then you go from that to playing Mickey Mantle. Oh, yeah. That's that's a, a big departure. You yeah. Know? So this is a lot of diversity. I'm a comedian, break dancer, very alabasterish, and so you're all these things. How did you come? I mean, you do look like Mickey Mantle. You do have that going for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was that was great. I did a play, the first play I did with uh, a guy named Tommy Kale, who directed Hamilton. I don't know if you have heard of Tommy Kale before. but um, I thought you were going to say, have you ever because, heard of Hamilton before? Because Lin-Manuel no, Miranda I, gets all the sort of, he's the front man of the band. He does, yes. But Tommy Kale is like the Steve Wozniak. 
Like he, Got it. I think he might be the secret genius in the mix. But um, wow. they're both genius. Anyway, the point is, he directed a play called Lombardi with Dan Laurie. I don't know if you remember Dan. Dan of Laurie. course, I know yeah. Dan. Yes, yeah. of great yes. guy. So he played great Lombardi. Play. Yeah, exactly. And I played Paul Horning. And the same, a lot of the same producers were involved. <gasps> Paul you Horning, Paul? you're a Paul Horning fan. You played Paul Horning. And I met him. I actually went and interviewed him in Kentucky before I did the play on Broadway. Yeah. You interviewed Paul Horning. Bef- yeah, before he passed, obviously. Right. Yeah. yeah, it was 2010 or 11. Yeah. What would you say his equivalent is today? I'm trying to give bring it to you know, modern day so they can understand a little bit of Tom Brady, but more of like a. Obviously, he was more of a bad boy. Yeah, they called yeah. him the Golden Boy, though. He the was, Golden Boy. Yes. Yeah, I mean him. So that's why I didn't cast they, don't they call Tom Brady the Golden Boy. Probably. Yeah. I think they did. Right. They just took this from Paul Horning. So it's he was like, the original. Yeah. He so, was the OG. And, and Paul Horning and Mickey Mantle have similar kind of. It's like yes. you know these Cigarettes, amazingly booze, handsome, talented yes. guys who just were addicted to sex, addicted to booze, yeah. addicted wow. to partying. The tension, and they kind of ruined their careers because they couldn't recover no. from injury because of it. You know, right? Yeah, neither one of them. So could. I'm great at playing washed up ex athletes. That's like my <laughs> that's my wheelhouse right there. You're trying to make me not jealous. <laughs> I think that, but so the director saw you play Paul Horning, so you get to know the director. He says, "Listen, I now have a piece mm-hmm. about Mickey Mantle." Yeah. And was it a one-person show, or was it a play? No, it was a play called Bonks Bombers. And, uh, hey, if you're going to put a play on Broadway, don't have bomb in the title because uh, <laughs> the critics had a field day. Um, <laughs> and it, oh, it, God. It didn't, like, bomb, bomb, bomb. But yeah. Lombardi was a hit. It ran for, like, nine months. Yes. It was, like, a, a kind of underground hit. And Bronx Bombers just didn't quite... And I actually had a whole thing with... Okay, so you know Mickey Mantle. You know so You just yeah, know this shit, right? Yeah. Mickey Mantle was... He got injured Love in him. right field. I think he stepped Amazing in a guy. dream. Yeah, he did. Right? Yeah. Like one of the first season. Right. Um, but he was a deeply, deep troubled guy. So yes. there's a line I have in the play where I go, um, I said, hey, I had a hole in my thigh. From, well, I don't want to say where it's from. It was from untreated syphilis, by the way, which is why he dropped out of the home run race with Roger Maris. He had untreated syphilis. It became a gaping hole in his thigh. Oh, I did not know So it was this. a tragedy. about the dream, tragedy. but not about this. Yeah, but he was always trying to put a face. He was like, hey, I had a hole in my thigh. From, I don't want to say it was from. But let me just say this. I led the league in syphilis four years in a row. <laughs> and they laugh. I go, hey, my wife came in second. And so that is something yeah. that is, he actually said. It's documented. He said And it. the critics had a hard time with it. Well, the, Major League Baseball were... was a producer on it. So MLB was like, we can't have that in there. I'm like, what the, f-? I go, New York theater is for like Jews from New York and Long Island right. and gay people. That's who. That's the majority of the audience, right? Yes. They Not, want drama. They don't want to look at a playing card on stage, right? Don't just fucking. Gl- no one gives a shit about the fucking Yankee. You're not right. gonna get what the he Yankees hit. Fans. Nobody cares about what he hit. Yeah. No, we care about you know the diversity and the adversity and, yeah. and and things like that. That that's what and character. This is how character yes. is made because of what he had to deal with. Yeah. From his own doing. Yeah. And addiction mm-hmm. and. So, like you were saying, sex addict, drunk, mm-hmm. alcoholic. And by the way, it's not like you're even out of school. He's the one who admitted it at the end. Of course. He got sober at the end. Yeah, that was his whole thing. So, yeah. I, I, in just that one line. Was he alive when you did the play? Mickey Mantle. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey Mantle's been dead for a while, right? Because this, this was in 2000, uh, God, when was it? Fuck. 2014, 13? Okay, Bomber, I'd sudden? say probably he was dead five years by then. Oh, really? Okay. We could have our producer look it up if he's listening. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I think he goes to the bathroom when he's yeah. doing this. But so, yeah, so he obviously wasn't there for this, and yeah. and it, and it did not do well. It got taken down. Yeah, it's fast. just because they made Even it for that. They made it for Yankees his, fans, and I'm Yankees fans don't go to Broadway. Broadway fans go to Broadway, yeah. and if it's really good, like Lombardi was, mm-hmm. then you'll get the. You know, we did ha- end up having like a lot of. One fun story is the Miami Dolphins came to a production of uh, uh, a matinee of Lombardi. You mean the old Miami Dolphins in 72 that won <laughs> the, the, the only no, the perfect cur- season? The, cur- oh, the, the current, current team showed up, and they just thought it was a it movie wasn't theater. Wasn't Vern Den Herter from, from <laughs> Nick Bonacani <laughs> no. from, the old, uh, from those Dolphins? No, no, no. It was the new Dolphins. The new Dolphins. The bigger, fatter Dolphins okay. going into a Broadway theater. And yeah. they thought it was like a movie theater. So they literally went in and just sat in the first like three rows, like in a, it was in the round. The theater was in the round. Oh, so that you have all these old biddies coming in from like Poughkeepsie or Long Island, yeah, well, going like, um, well, I'm in the, I'm sorry. So they, 
Everyone just kind of stayed away. <laughs> they had no idea that there were assigned seats on Broadway. It was great. <laughs> and what do you do? Do you have to delay the show and go, hey? No, they you... just literally, everyone just, okay, let's let the fucking these giant men just sit there. <laughs> right, let them sit where they want. Putting their legs up, right, because <laughs> yeah. they can't and those fit seats the seats. Are, I They're mean, those so Broadway small. shows. Oh, God, exactly. Teeny. Yes, I can't stand, I'm six too, I can't stand it. I yeah, can't yeah. imagine these big monsters. Watch. I love theater, though. It's one of my jealousies with you. Big time, a big theater guy. Started in theater. Yeah. But then just got into stand-up. And you started in theater as well. Yeah. And, and other things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was always, that was always my dream. I remember I was in college, and I was looking at a playbill. And I was like, this guy's on a playbill? Yeah. He has a credit? It says law, he did law and order? <laughs> and I was like, one day. The New Yorkers always do law and order. <laughs> That's yeah. always on their credit. Did you yeah. ever notice that? Well, first it's like, oh my God. Okay. And then when, if, like, if someone doesn't have Law & Order, like how bad are you that you haven't <laughs> been on Law & Order yet? They take every dipshit. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally every single person in any playbill in New York, because it's the only way they can make money is a Dick Wolf series. Oh, yeah. One of those Law & Orders. It has to be on your Love resume. Love you, Dick Wolf. Dick Wolf, man. Thank God for him. He gave me my first show, my first big oh, guest there you star. go. Yeah, I thought you were it. kidding. <laughs> No, I fucking... Which was that? What show was that? It was a show that never... Spin off of Law & Order? It was a show called Feds, which um, didn't last very long. Yeah. But it was one of... But it was like a big, big guest star. It was my first acting job in like 2000 or something. And uh, it was... Uh, yeah, it was great. So and he, I auditioned for him, and he was just like, come stare at me. I was like, oh, he fucking hated me, but he got me the part. So, yeah. Wow, that's oh, awesome. I mean, auditioning for him, I and mean, this guy's an icon. He, yeah, and he's intimidating, And dude. he always keeps things in New York, which is really cool of yeah. him to do. And, and it literally gives – people don't realize this. When you do plays in New York, when you're a theater, when you're an actor in New York, you've got to do commercials – or a Dick Wolf series. Otherwise, yeah. you're not making any money because plays do Wolf not Dick Wolf or make... you suck dick. That's yeah. the only way you get by in New York. <laughs> I never I never went that way. Mickey Mantle passed in 1995. How off was I? Yeah. How off was well, I? Who would know, you know? Well, I mean, apparently just... Gordon was listening. He just put it up on the board here. <laughs> 95. Wow. I, yeah. I have no idea it was that long because... I remember his story. Obviously, did you study his story? Like, oh man, I try to do really, everything. I try to go full Christian Bale on it and just read everything and watch everything. Wow. And um, and I watched Tom Jane play uh, him in sixty one. He by was way, amazing, by the way. Amazing. He's a great actor. He is a great actor. Yes. He's a crazy person, but he's a great actor. A lot of people are like Tom. Oh, J- he's a crazy person. He's a crazy person. He certainly looked at a boogie nights. Yeah, he's one of my favorite scenes in history. Yeah. Film history is the scene with him. Yeah, you know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, of course. Which one? Okay, in the table, the him <gasps> and Mark. Yeah. Oh, Mark, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was one of the best scenes I've oh, ever. So good with the firecrackers. <laughs> yeah. What a director that was. That yeah. Put the, 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 Paul Thomas Harrison, right? Yeah, the small, the the small Asian with, and and, and you know. Jesse's girl, you know, Alf, by the way, another great actor, Alfred Molina, one of the best actors yeah. ever, another underrated, yeah. doing Jesse's girl. That was an unbelievable scene. But him, with when he's, you know, with, with coke, I was so frightened because I've actually been in those situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there when the boogie nights, I was, oh, my God. And the way he ex- that is really great acting. So he's a little crazy in real life. Well, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go into the story too much, but basically, like, I, I have a daughter because of Tom Jane. Because Tom Jane's manager, <laughs> at around like when I was out of school, like 2000, whatever, like uh, around that time, Tom Jane's manager saw me in a play and wanted to represent me. And she was, I represent Tom Jane. I'm like, Tom Jane from Boogie Nights? Fuck yeah. I want you, I want you to be my manager. And Hung, he was amazing and Hung. He was great. I mean, everything. He's a, he is a brilliant, brilliant fucking actor. Super underrated. The name of your one-man show is I Have a Daughter Because of Tom Jane. <laughs> <laughs> but people are going to come just not, he's go never get, out He hasn't got the credit. And also, in, in terms of his, his performance as uh, Mickey Mantle, um, I ended up banging my talent manager. That's why I have the daughter, a one-night stand. I have a daughter. My daughter's amazing. She's graduated at Berkeley. Love my life. She's wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you one night stand because of Tom Jane because of well she you inter- she managed me and then at one point when she's managed me like I don't want to manage you anymore I want to fuck you and I was like what oh the you, okay wait a minute you fucked Tom Jane's manager who was my manager who was your manager yeah now, I've heard waitresses before I you know I've heard you know groupies I've never heard listen we're gonna change this from you being my manager because I am going to fuck you I right didn't now. want to she. She, she did seduced it. me, Mrs. Robinson. She was older, <laughs> and I was like just out of school. I was like 24, whatever it was. And what does uh, older mean? What does that mean? I think she was like 11 years older. So she probably wanted to have a child. 12. Yeah, for sure. 
right? Sure. Yeah. Because she was like, this yeah. guy is good for this. He's got good genes. Yeah. Right? Well, she was also begging, oh, should I should say names. She was begging Matt LeBlanc, and she was hoping he was the father. But winner, winner, chicken dinner. So, um, yeah. <laughs> That's, so, by the way, do you have d- d- completely different looks? <laughs> You, I mean, right? He's he's dark hair, and you're. I know, and, and my baby came out like boom, looks exactly like me. It's oh crazy. no, yeah. yeah, no DNA test on that. No, one. I mean, wow. it took one, but uh, but yeah, she looks just like me. I had a woman that called me once, you know, at one night stand. And she yeah. says, uh, "I'm pregnant with your baby." I'm going, whoa, 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 you know. And this was somebody. No I, hablo inglés. This, no. <laughs> this is somebody I would not have wanted to have a child with. Yeah, this is like one of those nights. Yeah, you know, I hadn't been laid in a while, whatever. <laughs> and then she goes, or it could be. Another guy. And I go, really? And she says, he's black. So <laughs> she literally, literally called me and said, well, the baby is black. And I'm going, great. And after the baby she, came out. After the baby comes out. And then a week later, she goes, he's turning white. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's dying. What's happening? Uh, so I had to have the, you know, the, <laughs> have the, the, the uh, paint color chart. On this, I kept having to check in on the colors. Oh my God. It's like turning colors like a camellia. I go, what is it today? Because I do not want, because I was getting married to someone at the time. Oh, wow. And I had to tell her this. I said, listen, this is before you, but I just got this news and it could be mine and it could be a black guy. But uh, I haven't heard back since. So I'd yeah. imagine the kids stayed, <laughs> stayed good and dark. Yeah, at least not too white. Yeah. Th- yes. So, uh, <laughs> wow. So you have this. One night stand, and then she dumps you as a client. No more of that. She got what you it know. was. We, you know, we'd we'd had a f- we'd fought. She was she's whatever. I'm not going to say anything, but right. she was not healthy mentally, yeah, or emotionally. And uh, we, I'd already kind of sat and work with you, and then we hooked up at one time as like a good <laughs> as a goodbye. Mm-hmm. But it ended up being hello for the next 18 years. So your so, daughter's 18 years old. Um, she's she's in college right now. She's at Berkeley. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. So she's great. So she so and did she stay the mother? Did she stay in the business like as a manager? No, she dropped out of the business for soon. She? She'd been fired by Matt LeBlanc, fired by Tom Jane. Like right when I was coming in, I'm like, look at who she's rep. She, wow. she used to represent Matt LeBlanc too. I was like, look who she's representing. And then like, she, she they both fired her. And then I'm sitting like, wait, I thought you were this amazing manager. And then anyway, so that's let's just segue from that smoothly into back. To- I've got, I've got it, I've got you, I got your back on this. Segway King's got you. Yeah, I, believe me, yes, I know where you want to go away from this. I got it. We got you a daughter now. Yeah, which you're happy about your daughter. She's at Berkeley. That's amazing. Uh, my my kid just graduated a college at two ten on your SATs. You're an honor student. So be yeah. very proud of her, Berkeley. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yes, yeah, so. Uh, so Broadway veteran is what I read in the bio, by the way. So there's my jealousy, okay? Big Broadway guy. Yeah. Love Broadway. But you don't do musicals? Is I that correct? I don't do musicals, yeah. Oh, you might be jealous of me then. Oh, man. I just sang on I Broadway you, right I, here. Yeah, what did you sing on Broadway? Um, weird story, but Kenny Loggins, you know who that is? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I was touring with him, and one of the guys got sick, and I learned the lines, the, the, the bass lines over dinner. And ended up replacing the guy for the whole week. So I technically I sang on oh, Broadway. Wow, well, yeah, my name is... was in Lights, Neil Simon Theater. Amazing. And I ended up doing my show. What was the show on Broadway? I, that he him, did? D- Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins. But I was the opener for a whole year and a half with him. Yeah. And um, and he was freaking out that the guy was sick. And I said, I got you. And I'm not really. Um, it was bass, and I'm more of a baritone. Yeah. You know, so I had to go. You know that. Do, 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 do. I'm all right. You know that? I had to do, 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 do you know, that kind of thing. So yeah. I had to go down Big Daddy bass, but yeah. still sang on Broadway, and it still is a goal of mine yeah. to play Javert. I'd like to be Javert yeah. on Broadway. But you don't have singing. I, I'm getting I less don't. jealous by the moment. No, I, I don't. I, I, I mean, it. if I could sing, I probably wouldn't. I would probably just stay in New York and just do Broadway musicals. Oh. You know, because, you know, they there is a market for just, like, dudes who sing. And I'm not making any kind of statement about sexuality, well, but you know what I mean. Just like normal oh, blue collar guys, I know what you're saying. saying. God, you know what I mean. The theme of this show keeps going to the gay thing, but we're going to have to go there. Now I tape, I, I do a number of these in a row. Literally, we had Jason Stewart uh-huh. was here earlier and gay, yeah, and we talked about that. Then Joey Medina comes in. We talked about you know gay that we love to hang out 
That's the thing. But I loved hanging out because I was the straight guy. Yeah. And the same with plays. I would get the leads in plays because straight guy. Yeah. Yeah. I watched Mama Mia with my friend. We were howling laughing. Yeah. It's, it's not to be derogatory. We're howling laughing at this guy. The lead was as queenie as it gets. <laughs> he's, he's in snorkel and fins doing these dances. Very not, you know, you would not think this guy had this hot woman. Yeah, right? exactly. And, and they do it in a certain, there's a certain flamboyance and a way that they're dancing. You're going, oh, you know, the, the, the guy. So we started howling, laughing at the thought. So I'm sure you've had some parts you were casting because you're very uh, oh, thing I'm jealous when of. When I first got out of school, it was nothing but gay guys. That's right. all they were. Because they also don't grow facial hair, really. So it was like if you're a blonde guy and you can't grow a, a, a sweet Western beard or something, you're just playing gay dudes for the next five years. Oh, you know? my God. Now, <laughs> do, you, um, do you get hit on? By, did you get hit on a lot by gay men, right? I mean, that's a joke I used to say because when yeah. I first came out of school, and it's totally true, I, 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 roller, I was in Manhattan, and I, was, I would rollerblade around, even when I was in school. I would wear, like, a tank top and rollerblade to school and whatnot. Okay. And guys would look at me, and I always thought they were trying to pick a fight. Like, I'm a dude from Virginia, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, like, why these guys? Meanwhile, I didn't know that I was literally gay bait, you know what I mean? I looked like the biggest <laughs> twink in, the, in Manhattan. With my hip hop baggy pants, my tank top, and my rollerblades, not knowing it was you basically don't know any better. A, a gay calling card, but I had no idea. Right. But I used to talk about that like I was like when I was in my twenties, and guy like people would assume I was gay, or they I was like, well, why do I look gay? Do I smell gay? Am I lately gay? What's going on? And now at my age, people think I'm gay. I'm like, I still got it, yeah, man. <laughs> so I don't get hit on the way I used to get hit on by. I know by it's, it's a little bummer. disappointing. Yeah, yeah. I lived in West Hollywood. And- if I ever had low self-esteem, I'd just go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never had a woman that looks at me like that or approaches me like that. Yeah. I've never had once a woman go, <laughs> I had a guy in a wheelchair came up to me, <laughs> on a, and he goes, need a ride, big boy? I've never had a woman do that. So you feel better about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I but, love it. I used to love it. I mean, sometimes, you know. And now we've lost look, our touch, haven't we? Yeah. You still look hot, though. But now I look like a bear. I used to like a, no, like a whatever. Bear. What's the other thing? The otter? I don't know. Now I'm a bear, and I'm like the big, the big like. No, if you're not fat though. Mm. Uh, bears tend to be a little heavier. Yeah. Yeah, they tend to be. That's what a bear is. So you, you, you've, you're something else. Okay. Now you're also in shape. My other, I'm just running down the jealousies. <laughs> okay. Like a yoga teacher. I used to teach yoga. Yeah. For but, years. And what do you do about yoga now? Do you still I practice? Had, I, I I quit cold. Turkey like it was a, a drug. And I think the reason is because I think there was just a day I just looked in the mirror. I'm like, I didn't like, I didn't like who I'd be. I think I had like a ponytail or something. And, <laughs> and I you just, know, there's other like, ways to, to <laughs> not, you don't have to quit yoga. You could cut, chop the ponytail would be another, <laughs> another healthy option. I, I think it's just like, I tell you what it was. It was yoga's great. Do yoga. It's awesome. Be flexible. But there's a certain ideology around yoga and about being a yoga teacher. There's a certain arrogance and entitlement about mm. who I am and what I can do. And I'm so much better. And, and, um, but does it have to be that way? I felt like that was the community. It's the not community, like a casting call. You have to play it's basically the part. Like, it's basically like vegans, but yoga teachers are, they're all either they're literally vegans or they just have that same, like, let me explain what you need in your life. Mm. And then you find yourself getting kind of like, and everything, and I'm a, I'm a dude. You know what I mean. At the end of the day, I I have I have violent tendencies. I'm aggressive. I have things to say. But I would do yoga, and I would teach love and peace, and meditate, and have this yoga voice, and have all my mm. female clients. And then I'd go out doing comedy, get yeah. drunk, punch walls, punch people, <laughs> like get in fights. It was weird. I was like, there's some there's a disconnect here. Yeah. There's something that isn't working yeah. here. If I'm going, if if I'm Friday night getting drunk banging a girl inside the Laugh Factory in New York, getting in a fight with someone at the bar, and then nine more, go, okay, everyone, deep breaths, inhale. I was like, Something's, I don't like who I am yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. And yoga teachers don't use the word banging. <laughs> <laughs> that's, there's, that's not in the terminology. <laughs> no. Everyone, let's uh, yeah. Namaste. Who's had a good bang <laughs> last night? So I have the same issue like with my Philly yeah. guy. Like, I'm a Philly guy. Yeah. You know, fights and... Things like that, and I, I'm out in California now. It's a real dichotomy. It's really, it's like a they fight against one another. Yeah, you know. And you, I try to be you know, spiritual and conscious. You know, like when I'm 
coaching. Yeah. You know, I coach Little League and stuff like that. Yeah. Football and things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'll go, you know, he's out. Do him, you know, namaste. Sorry. <laughs> apologize. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there is there is that fight. That's what this show is actually about, is I have a goal of building a bridge. Like, comics are that cynical, sarcastic, cut off from, you know, spirituality, make fun of spirituality, definitely religion. Mm-hmm. And then the spiritual people are so damn serious, like you were just saying, yeah. and pompous, mm-hmm. and, and use it as a badge of arrogance and, you know, know and it all. use it to get laid, let's be honest, too, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, for really? sure. Oh, I'll, I'll commit it's to like that. O- then. Owen Wilson what? and Zoolander are like, hey, guys, let's kind of get together and have, like, you know, all three of us, you know, like, <laughs> like I used to, I used to, like, love trying to get threesomes. And I was, I had to, you know, it happened several times, but, um. Oh, but I would this. do I would do it in a way that was like I would do it in a way that was like oh come on guys let's just fucking relax and you know in this bullshitty as opposed to what I really want to say like hey guys let's just fuck let's take our clothes fuck. Yeah, but right. you're like, hey come on it's just all spirit like let's just touch you let's hold hands in a circle you know you do all this bullshit and then I started thinking I, I don't like it and and then one day um after I'd like I think I punched a wall or something stupid my friends like you should do jujitsu so I I joined. Henzo Gracie Academy Jiu Jitsu and that Gracie. And fucking, that was it changed my life big comedy fans by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, down to Comedy for Magic, Magic Club in Hermosa. We come to my shows all the time. Yeah, they all have great sense of humor. Yeah, they guys. must. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were introduced. I didn't really follow it, so I didn't know who they were. Yeah. The Gracies are, like, legends yeah. Yeah. in fighting. Like, yeah. the best fighters, right? I mean, Well, they basically started or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. They were the best fighters, and then people kind of yeah. caught up to them with other practices. Yeah, so Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu basically is... is what created the UFC. The yes. UFC was created to show the world right. that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu could, could be any discipline. And that was kind of true for a while. But um, then sort of American wrestling kind of is now sort of like, or just wrestling in general is sort of the the main discipline that's really winning the fights in the UFC. But um, it helped me because it kind of, it diminished all my like weird violent tendencies because you just work them out on a mat work with someone. And you get humiliated constantly. Yes. You're like, ah, whoa, whoa. you know, you're con- every every day you're humiliated. It's hard to by be cocky beast. when you're choking. Yeah, exactly. You're like, fuck you. And you're doing fuck yoga you. and you're just like, oh, I'm so much better. You're wearing your little tank top <laughs> with stripes. Ugh. I hated myself. <laughs> you know, like I said, you didn't have to be. Uh, I know. I know. I know. And there was a way to do I just couldn't. And then when I'd take another class, I'd see the teachers and the mm-hmm. men. You'd see these male teachers. With, and so many women who do yoga are like ex-ballerinas. Mm-hmm. They have like near perfect form. Oh yeah. And then you have guys who are just trying to look at butts in the class or whatever. But they're right. but they're trying. They're shake. They're in downward dog, shaking, sweating. God. Their belly's hanging over. And the teacher goes and just the hot perfect ten girl who's a perfect position. Like motherfucker, what are you doing? You want to help? This guy needs help. He doesn't know what the position wow. is. This and I would just see that across the board. It's it just almost like me. you had a camera in the room when I did the yoga. That's what you just said was literally what happened. And I did. I had never done yoga before, and I heard that all the hot girls were seeing. You probably know the guy, Rod. What was that guy's Rod? Uh, he ended Rod. up marrying some hot, you know, like maybe Cheryl Teagues or something like that. <laughs> That's what he. Meant. But anyway, this guy Rod, and uh, all of a sudden Rod became this big. You had to go see Rod. So I heard that all the babes were there. But it was like that. It was a hot yoga. Oh yeah. And I didn't know this. They shut the windows, so I'm in there sweating. Literally, <laughs> the the sound sound like there was a gutter emptying out during a storm. On the pat, on the you know, I didn't put the towel down. It was on my mat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, it was, com- and I have large pores. I had a facial. <laughs> they found a bar of soap. I have really <laughs> large pores. It was pouring out the sound I was making, and I'm trying to pick up women. It was so embarrassing. They're looking at me with disgust and disdain. I'm this drenched, hairy asshole. You know, like doing these poses I couldn't do. I'm t- literally yeah. groaning. And then I said these words, which everyone. Gave me a look. I said, can somebody open a window? <laughs> so, needless to say, I did not find any women that day in my in my first yoga that I had ever done. I choose the advanced class. Yeah. Because oh, Bikram I, shit, that's hard as fuck. Bikram, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's what it was called, Bikram. Yeah. And and I they wouldn't open the window. I begged them to. <laughs> and then I vomited after the class. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Does it really? Yeah. That shit is so unhealthy. They, Seriously, yeah. They, oh, they, people think because you're sweating, it's better. But first of all, Bikram, who founded the whole thing, was a he was a sexual oh, yeah. assaulter oh, yeah. and yeah. con man, so, a, and just a, full of shit, piece right. of shit. 
and There's a documentary about it. All of his things about you know the, the temperature, whatever, dude. No, it doesn't. You you you, you should generate that sweat from your actions and from. Your motion, you generate from the inside out, not from the outside. And it's just, a, it's an absurd idea. Wow. I There's no, no idea. scientific sort of basis for it. Yeah. How about that? See, I was fooled and I always thought yeah. that uh, because I, I did it again and ev- three times I've tried like the heavy duty yoga and I vomited every time or came close <laughs> to vomited every time. So was that like toxins? You were doing the hot yoga every time? Yeah, I made yeah, the mistake. No, don't I just, do that yoga, yeah. No, I've, I've tried other, I just not, I'm just not that into it. You yeah. Know? I'm more of a, I don't know if you're this. I'm more of a, like a competition, or yeah, you know, I gotta like I'm I'm not self obsessed enough to like look at myself and go, oh, you're gonna grow. I'm more insecure <laughs> that I have to beat somebody. Like if if I'm in downward dog, I'm ready. For, that's a race to me. That's like in the starting blocks. Yeah, yeah. I want to go somewhere. Yeah, and I want to be the best at something. I was the worst first of all at this, but there's no. There's no scorecard. Yeah. You know, it's about yourself. I'm just not that vain or something. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's, first of all, I think people do make yoga competition. You they know, do? They go up there and just like, I'm in front of the class. Look at my fucking. Oh, yoga I hate position. that. Yes. Yeah, the front of the class people. Ugh. I didn't like them in school. I'm not going to like them in yoga class. Yeah. I think just in general, we talked about this at Supernova, just like everything that I can't, just sort of <laughs> a, like the idea of like what it means to be a man and, and, and cancel culture and, oh. and the idea of like, being a pussy or what that means. I know that word is sort of verboten now, but uh, there is something about the idea of, of uh, as men, there is a certain, I feel there's still a certain obligation to be a protector. Mm-hmm. And what that means is you have some sort of um, ability to murder someone. You know what I mean? You shouldn't do it obviously, but you have the ability and it's, I think it's essential that you can protect your child, your, your girl, your wife. Yeah. And we're cr- trying to create this weird sort of like mishmash where yeah. everyone's kind of the same and, and, and chivalry's, you know, yeah, because you be chivalrous. I yeah, mean, because it's, it's sexist it. to be chival- chivalrous now. Yeah, now so. it's sexist. You're, you're just trying to like help someone or protect yeah. someone who doesn't have the skills that you have. So why would I not want to do that? Yeah. So I think we kind I think the culture's kind of lost the thread in a way because I think it's great that men are not getting away with the bullshit and the rape and yeah. assault and misconduct. That's obviously, should be, it's great that's happened. At the same time, like men still need to, to create a, uh, a situation where th- they can protect their family and their, and their woman, their home. And women actually want that. Yes. And for some reason, they're being told they don't, but they actually do. Oh, it's weird. I've spent my whole life like this, like, yeah. you know, trying to, be something that I'm really not. We have natural instincts, like yeah. you were saying. I have a natural instinct to protect. Yeah. Okay? And now that's being called something else, so I have to adjust now because I don't want to be judged as being sexist or whatever it is. Or, or toxic misogynist. masculinity. Yes, or anything like exactly. That. Yeah. But it's something that's real. That's yeah. what this... This is one of the reasons I have this show is conversations like this. Is We have to be comfortable with these conversations because there is a balance that needs to take place right now. Yeah. It's gone so far the other way. It has to come back to some center yeah. because it's now gone into, you can't say the word pussy. I got a woman attack me on Facebook. You know, yeah. I, I said, I said, this is what the line was. You know, my, my, my nephew bumped his head in a playground and everyone, ooh, like that. And I said, don't worry, it's one of those pussy playgrounds. I said, I grew up with gravel. I still have gravel on my skin. That's what the bit was about. Yeah. I become like this guy. It's part of me, you know, like the angry guy. Yeah. yeah it was one of those pussy playgrounds. I just threw it out there. And she fucking freaked at me. Yeah. You know, and there was a stand up set? Yeah. I'm, I'm going, I'm going, what is wrong? What is wrong? What is it? Seriously? Yeah. And I said, you know, it means cat. She goes, that's not what you meant. <laughs> and I have to explain myself. I'm going back and forth with her. You know, we have to defend ourselves over yeah. language. Yeah. And you're like, at least appreciate the alliteration in, pl- in Pussy Playground. Can you not see <laughs> how that works phonetically, at least, you dipshit? And it was ad-libbed. It wasn't even written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I had alliteration that comes naturally and instinctually to <laughs> yeah. a stand-up comic has been at it for a few Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I'm going to come back. Now I'm going to go back to where I would say, you didn't even appreciate the alliteration. <laughs> Bill Dawes said that. By the way, he's a sexist. Anyways. <laughs> How about all the ists that are out there? Um, There's a lot of ists. You're this ist and this ist. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's, there's, there's, there's a lot of ists. I mean, look, there's ists in the other direction, but you're not a – you could be a transgenderist, but that's a good thing. So 
I, I don't I'm really, a humanist. I'm a humanist. I, I like to think that. I, I just tend to think that um, I believe that everything, the solution to everything, yeah, is love, empathy, and compassion. That's right it. Right on. Right on. That is it. There's nothing. There's no screaming. There's no white fragility book. There's no amount of guilt. There's no fucking relearning or wherever the fuck it is to evolve into a better place, better than love, empathy, and compassion. And if people, and I'm not saying that you can't fight for justice, but there's also a moment where you got to shut the fuck up. There's a moment, and I don't know where it is, so I'm not saying I'm an extra here, but there is a moment where you have to, even when you're making your point, there's always a way to come with love, empathy, and compassion for it. Love, empathy, and compassion for the cops. Love, empathy, and compassion for, for black people, for white people. For, there is something that, and I think that is such a better way to handle any problem. Biggest thing it's missing, by the way. Yeah, it's what's missing from both sides. The, I, of course, of course. And the irony is the evangelicals, Christ consciousness is love, empathy, and compassion. For sure. That's what Christ consciousness is. Yes, yeah, and it has gone out the window, and I don't understand the evangelicals how they make that okay. Yeah, you know, because there is so much racism and so much sexism, it goes on, you know. And I'm not knocking evangelicals; I'm, I'm knocking the ones that are that way. Yeah, for they sure. Do not, and it's not like all, but the ones who are that way, the hypocritical thing. I just don't get how you look at yourself in the mirror. I can look just like you can in my mirror and go, yes, in general. Good guy, humanist. Your love, compassion, empathy are run me. Yeah. So I resonate with that, and that's who I try to hang out with. Yeah. You know, more of those. We and need it, to build a tribe of them. I used to feel that. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, that'd be great. Like build a tribe, like a movement <laughs> called Love, Compassion, Empathy. Well, here's the problem. Well, they the they problem. try that. They make these utopias. Yeah. It starts off great, but then sure enough, one person just starts fucking everyone in the cult. And right. it ruins the whole deal. Right. Because humans are not, <laughs> humans cannot be given keys to the kingdom. Wow. We're just not evolved enough, unfortunately. I can't believe you're saying this. I thought the same thing. I think that I couldn't be one of those leaders. My dad's a cult leader for years. Really? Oh, yeah. All women, called as a harem, Whoa. 14 at the max, and, you know, wow. was in tens, nines, and he had always had a, a group. He now has, like, one left, but... But it's, it was fascinating to me. But it had to be about him. It had to be about yeah. him getting laid. Or you watch this Rainier, who is now in life in prison. You heard yeah. about that that cult. Yeah. It's. I watched the movie, the documentary on this guy, this Keith Rainier. I'm obsessed with that shit. Yeah, oh, I watch it too, too. Both of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm obsessed with it because it's like, what does it take to for them? Where do they? Where's the 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 switch flip? Yes. For them? Like you see, the intentions are there in this wonderful program that they have. I'm going. I can and they are helping that. people. Exactly. Yeah. All of them start like that. Scientology. Absolutely. I happen to know major Scientologists. Never came on to me, which I'm a little offended by. <laughs> I actually called one and asked, like, "How come you don't ever come on it?" <laughs> That's how insecure I am. But all have these great intentions, and then you get the people with the ego. Mm -hmm. that just ruin it for everybody. Yeah. You know, now they're burning people and raping them. And yeah. this guy just went off the charts on evil. Yeah. I, it's, it's the ring of power. You know, you cannot give humans the ring of power. They will, you, they will, someone will take the ring of power eventually and fucking destroy any idea of, of a commune. That's why my like young Gen Z friends who are all like fucking Bernie Sanders. I'm like the idea of, <laughs> of socialism and commune. It's a great idea. It is not practical in a world filled with men at the state of evolvement we're at right now. Right, right. Someone will take it and corrupt it. Someone in that space. I mean, there was just a, there was a real time experiment with it, with that Chaz Chad shit in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, we have this like free <laughs> from the cities. And sure enough, people like, I'm the leader of Chaz now, of course, because yeah. he, too many humans are just infected with that are, need. Are you, are you familiar with 12 step programs? Somewhat. I've never been in one, but I've, I've dated a lot of women who have. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's something in there that's really fascinating. It's, there are these, there's we are but trusted servants. We do not govern. There are no leaders. This is all part of it. Yeah. And I wonder if, like, you just borrow the tenets from that in some sort of other organized thing, in anonymous, no leaders. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing mm -hmm. concept. Yeah. And... So there is some precedence to what we're saying. Yeah. But I want to have like the humanist anonymous group. You know what I mean? 
And but here's here's where I here's where I have a hard time. Maybe maybe you relate to this. I like being a leader, but I don't like being a leader. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't like what comes with it because I'm very codependent. I care yeah. about people's feelings because of the empathy factor. But I do realize there are other people need to be led. I realize I have some qualities of a leader because, you know, both of us are in the stand-up business. You're a leader as a stand-up. Sure. Right? Yeah. We are leading an audience every single night. Mm-hmm. Don't, yeah. you, uh, don't you believe that? And, you, we, and we actually have cult-like people, fans, that you're, you're banging. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so in a way, you are leading them mm-hmm. to your hotel room or whatever <laughs> it is, but you're also leading them in applause and yeah. laughter and joy. And we, we have that ability, but it's the other part. It's that power thing you're talking about that I don't want to possess that power over people. Yeah. No, 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 no yeah. desire. Yeah, I've never, I've never really saw my. Whenever I was put in leadership positions, I was like, "Why are you guys looking at me? What the fuck?" <laughs> like I was captain of my soccer team or <laughs> top guy on my breakdance team, and people. Oh, came to I, didn't me even, that way. I didn't even see the soccer thing on there. I, yeah, I, I was jealous before. Just, just keep adding them. I was starting to, I was starting to get less jealous. You know, I didn't play professionally. Once, once you, t- once you told me that the hair was getting lost, the FU's broken. I said, "Oh, okay, he's a little human now. He's being humanized." But, but now you had to be the so- captain of the but soccer I'm team. Not a, I'm not a good leader. I'm not a good at, at leading myself or delegating. A th- I don't know. I mean, you have, like, look at all this shit. You have books and movies. And yeah. you were definitely, like, th- the head. You were paterfamilias. You were the head of a company, of a family of people. It's a different. You, you have, you know, I, I've always felt I'm like not, I'm a good second. I'm not good at it. Really? really not. No, I'm not at all. I've, I've literally have had people quit this job working with me within an hour. I'm not even, I had one that never even came the first day. I'm not kidding you. I'm what? not exaggerating this. My family laughs at me about the, the revolving door that I oh, have. Wow. Oh, yeah, it's terrible I, because I'm not a good leader. I'm not a good leader in that way. Yeah. I'm a good leader if people can kind of jive with um, some of the things that I'm suggesting. But I always give them power. I say, listen, you have full power to say anything to me and let's clarify. No, no. No, I, people either. I think people do need to be led literally yeah. by a boss type, by a power trip person. Mm-hmm. They need it. I yeah. could never do that because I feel too guilty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's something to be said for this old school Hollywood type that doesn't really exist anymore that's being kind of pushed out of the picture. The Michael Bays and the people like that who, um, you know, as much as they might be horrible to work with, like they got shit done. It's, and, it's really hard to. They got good shit done. Yeah. It's really hard to. Demand excellence with grace. That's you know very, what I mean? That is a very good. And those are the best. I, I mean, think that's can... the name of my cult, demand excellence with grace. <laughs> I like that. I, yeah. That's very well put. Could we be co-leaders in this? <laughs> we could start this thing. I mean, that's what this podcast is about anyway. I, I'll accept you as a, you don't can't be a captain. <laughs> no, okay, that's fine. Just Lieutenant, you, what is it? Yeah, a right wing. We'll okay. make it a right yeah, wing. That's fine. But uh, yeah, I mean. It would be a fabulous thing to do, though, is to have, you know, lead people or guide people. I like that better. Yeah. Also, guidance is better than leader. Yeah, for sure. Because you're just suggesting this might be a way you would go, and here's some obstacles over here. I'm not going to tell you to go there or punish you for not going there, but here might be a better way because I've been down that road before. Yeah. That's a way way to lead. Yeah. Yeah. And I like doing that. I like like kind of like semi life coaching people, trying to help them out. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You know? I actually started the business. I'm oh wow, literally coaching. I don't like the word I, life well, coach. Like, yeah, no, nah. because that's like yoga teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your life coach. <laughs> that's turned into yeah. That's yeah. turned into it. Your entire life with less I commitment. With yeah. less commitment, you can yeah. be literally, literally jerking off on your couch <laughs> while you're coaching someone on the phone. Not that I've ever done that, folks. I'm going to have to. Hypothetically. <laughs> Hypothetically. Yes. yes. So it doesn't even take what it takes to be a, a yoga instructor. It doesn't take that kind of dedication. So what do you want to be when you grow up? You oh, do so many gosh, things. Do you ever think about question. that? Like you. <sighs> Man. I, you know, I've always, I, I've, I've never <laughs> had that much ambition. And I don't mean that like, uh, but you know, people are like, I was 15 and I always wanted to you have yeah. a Netflix special. I was like, I never even, I just, uh, like, stand up for me was like, it started as fun and then it became the hobby and then became a job and, and, and I love it, but I've never really 
th- thought about it from a really sort of constructive business sense. Mm. It's always just been like, oh, you, you got a gig for me? I'll do it. Um, mm-hmm. So I... I love creating. I love writing. I love so as long as the work keeps coming in, and it kind of. Are keeps, you available this weekend, by the way, for a gig? Uh, I know one that's available because uh, the, the headliner's uh, mother died. Saturday? What night? Uh, f- a Friday and Saturday. Yeah. I can only do Saturday. Okay. Well, yeah. maybe I'll get you this gig. Yeah, I would love it. I yeah. love turning people on to gigs. But yeah. It was just offered to me. I can't do it, so I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday would be great. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing Friday? Friday, I mean, there's a. Sh- have you done the Dirty at twelve thirty in Vegas? You're doing that? You're going to Vegas just to do that show? Yeah. I did it after I headlined in the big room. I know. And then I would stop over and do that. Yeah. I, I never went to just do that well, show. Well, I usually headline the Tropicana. Is Gabe the guy? Gabe, yeah. I yeah. usually headline the Tropicana at, in uh, in Vegas. Okay. But if I do it, if I do the dirty then, Harry Basil will lose his mind. So I kind of had to have a separate... Because Harry Basil books... The Tropicana. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't want you going over. He feels it cannibalizes. It yeah, it. Yes, exactly. I understand. Well, listen, stand-ups like you just can't get enough in these stages. I'm the opposite. I can't wait to not do on stage, go on stage. What? Shut up. That's not true. I swear to God. <laughs> what do you mean? I tried retiring once. I, 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 I just, but you didn't. So be, obviously you needed to get back on stage because you loved it. No, because I needed the money. <laughs> Because this is what I do the best, right? I need the money. If I could make money doing a podcast... That I made doing yeah. stand up in a minute. In a minute. Now yeah. I love this. Sure. This is fantastic. I mean, I'm hanging with friends all the time and new friends. You're a new friend. I mean, this is really, this is wheelhouse shit for me. Yeah. Standing in front of people because I don't care about getting laid anymore. Yeah. You know, I, you know, the waitress's numbers. I don't care about yeah. attention. I realize that I'm not going to get the Netflix special like somebody up and coming. I get it now, yeah. right? So why do I, I don't have that drive anymore. I've been, yeah. plus I've been there. Yeah, I've been exactly. there and I can tell you that there is no there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, there's no There's there. never a there there's for no, anything, no, right? Exactly. You win an Oscar, you're not there. No. Then, you know? then five years later, you can't get past the velvet rope. Yeah. That's how fast Hollywood will yeah. get rid of you. And I think a great way to live your life is like acknowledging there's no there. Never think there's there. And just, I mean, to quote Miley Cyrus, it's all about the climb, not the destination. <laughs> I don't know if that was Miley That's Cyrus. That's a Miley quote. Cyrus quote. Well, I think it's like a, a Buddhist <laughs> quote that she... I think that was Marcus Aurelius or something yeah. like that. I think it was way before... But I, I th- think Marcus Aurelius would be very upset at you know his quotes being in songs <laughs> now, being credited yeah. to a pop star with large gums. I don't <laughs> think... <laughs> but don't you think that's a big problem with uh, with um, people in general, and particularly in L.A.? Like, they're so focused on destination. Yeah. They, they never see the journey for its value. Absolutely. And that's... Listen, that is a big key for people to hear. I know there are people who are up and coming comics that listen to this. I've been on Clubhouse, and it's really interesting to. I mean, there's this hunger. Yeah. You know, even even that they're there when I'm on Clubhouse, that they're going, oh my, I'm like, you know, I might be able to talk to this guy about opening, and what, what can he get me? It's not about that. Yeah. You know, there is no getting. Yeah. You, know, it, you just find when you get to those places, there's just such. You're like, wow, this is it. You know, and we've all heard this before, but really, I have experienced it. Yeah. So you don't want to be in any way you grow up. How about how about uh, do you want to have do you want to have children with someone that's actually, you know, appropriate to you, or do you have any desires? On I don't that? know if I don't know if I I'm looking for I, I don't dudes for my list. About by the way, marriage. I, I have a list of women. You know, I fix up people up all the time. I don't know how I feel about marriage. Okay, by that face, I can tell you're not on my list. I was I mean, going to put you at the top. I was going to say, this guy's really... But can't you just be with someone forever and not get married? Why does a lawyer guess, have to get involved? That is true. That is... And believe me, you're talking... <laughs> about, uh, I have an ex... I, like, I literally don't understand it. Like, no. why do you need to have oh, a then lawyer try going, involved? Then try going to court 15 years later. My ex-wife, still, we go to court. Still. It's cost me a million dollars of money that could have gone to kids on just dealing with just this pain. thing they call custody. You know, which is a horrible word. It sounds like your child is being yeah. arrested. Uh-huh. It's a horrible thing. And yes, it all has to do with money. It all has to do with money and greed and lawyers and trying to keep you, keep your acrimonious relationship, mm-hmm. you know, and all of that. But do you want to be, you talk about love, compassion, and empathy. Do you want to be in love with a partner that you are partnered with who also comes from that space? If I have to. <laughs> I didn't mean it to be a question of burden. All right. You're not on my list. I'm, I'm not going to fix you up with anybody. 
How can we find you on social media? Uh, I'm at Bill Dawes, uh, D-A-W-E-S, on the Instagrams and the uh, Twitters. I'm not really on Twitter anymore, but yeah, Facebook or whatever, yeah. I get my news from Twitter. <laughs> I really do. I know. It's, I, can't, I can't do it like anymore. the real quick hits. You yeah, know, that's I all I need even, anymore. I can't even fucking look at it anymore. Everyone right. pisses me off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, I, you just make your own way. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a, a different way to engage. All, all, they're all different ways to engage with people, so... I keep it for certain things. I play hashtag games. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It just it's, it keeps my comedy mind going. Sure, exactly. Entertain the people. They give you some likes, and your self esteem goes up. And if you get no <laughs> likes, then you have you go right back to when you started in high school, getting shot down by girls. Bill, this is a real pleasure, man. Uh, loved hanging with you here. Let's hang in real life. Yeah, for sure. By the way, I've said that to several guests. You're not alone in that, and not one of them has ever called me and contacted me and said, you know, that's a good idea to hang in real life. Craig, what can we do? Real let's go, life, what's let, that? Let's go for a, like there's a fake life. Let's go for let's go for a, a jog around. Uh, let's do some yoga together. It hasn't happened yet. But, uh, Bill, it really was, you know, it's such a pleasure meeting you. You know, we ran into one another. Yeah. You know, I've heard about you for years. I've heard about you for years, man. Is it good? Always, always good stuff, yeah. <laughs> I'm so insecure. <laughs> I never believe it. I never believe it. It's that that's what the you know Jason Stewart was here. He says, "Oh, they say good things about him. really what, you know." And who are they? <laughs> you know who, who are they? But uh, I'm I'm really glad to see you here. And how are you doing? A lot of stand up. I'm doing yeah. I'm doing enough to 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 keep the 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 fix. You know what I mean? Um, I, I'm not one of those guys who's like I need to do it every day, three times a day. No, I've right. Never been one of those guys, yeah. but. If I have like three to four shows a week, I'm fine. Well, what about touring? I mean, are you touring? Uh, I, I've, yeah, I, I, I don't really have a headlining um, fucking name. So I headline very sporadically. You know what I mean? I can't sell out the Schomburg Improv or whatever. But I wait tour. a minute. How many followers do you have on Instagram? I think I, I thought I peeked at it. You're way ahead. Yeah, of I me. have a lot, but it's but a lot of them Where are do overseas. They come from? A lot of them are uh, uh, some stuff I did got. Viral overseas and weird communities. How many? Really? So yeah. you have the weird community following? I had, I, had, I had a bunch of incels follow me from a bit. How many followers do you have? I think it's close to, I don't know, 90,000 or something. That's insane. That's a headliner. Somebody would book you just based on that. That's how it works now. Maybe. They don't well, care my, how my funny you are anymore. It's garbage now, though. It's dropped. I don't know what happened. Oh, it's really? Weird. Yeah. So yeah. anyway. Um, got to stay with it. But so I tour with uh, Jeremy Piven. I've been touring with him for... <gasps> A year. Oh, we talked about so. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard he's funny. I, I, yeah. I, I love to hear that. Yeah. Because, you know. He, he works hard. He yeah. works very hard. I think yeah. that's awesome. Well, ma thanks for being here. And uh, by the way, if Jeremy Piven wants to come on my show, you know, maybe that's why I had you here. <laughs> 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 All right, Bill, thanks. Hey, that's listen, uh, make sure you uh, follow Bill, follow us. Uh, give him some more likes and engagement. Give me some engagement. That's what we need to uh, keep this whole up. Uh, compassion, love, and empathy thing going. This is yeah. what we want to do, and we hope that you can do your part by just throw a like, throw a, a review, a nice review. If it's a bad review, keep it to yourself. Shut the fuck up. But listen, I really hope that you enjoyed today's show with Bill, and you're, you're not as jealous as I was that you're just accepting him for who he is. <laughs> so, <laughs> And listen, just remember this. Enlighten the fuck up, all right, folks? Yeah. See you next time. <laughs>